The capacity of our rear derailleur and front derailleur isn't a complicated matter if we only understand roughly how our drivetrain works. So let's talk about what the capacity is, what happens if the derailleur has either too high or too low capacity, and finally how can we find out what kind of capacity derailleur we need for our drivetrain and we're gonna do that in three steps for the rear derailleur and in just one simple step for the front derailleur. The capacity of the rear derailleur basically tells us what is the distance between these two pulleys or in other words what is the length of the derailleur's cage. It can be either short, medium or long and in case of the front derailleur the capacity is all about shaping of its plates. Now why do we need different capacities of our derailleurs for different drivetrains? Please look at the cage of the rear derailleur and see what happens while we change the gears. The cage of the derailleur will try to keep the tension on our chain because we don't want our chain to be just like that. It would cause many problems. And while the chain goes through the smaller sprockets, it will travel shorter way. So the cage has to adjust accordingly. And when we shift to those bigger ch uh, chain rings, like in the front and sprockets in the rear, as you can see, the chain will travel, will travel a longer way so that the cage has to adjust accordingly once more. What would happen if the capacity of our rear derailleur was too low? In this case that would mean installing short cage rear derailleur instead of long cage as we can see on this video uh, and that would mean also having shorter chain. So this is the extreme position uh, but in that position the cage of the rear derailleur would be extremely tight and also sometimes um, the rear derailleur would be able to get stuck on the uh, largest sprocket in the rear. So this cage cannot be too short so the capacity has to match a whole range of the gears on our drivetrain. What would happen though if the capacity of the rear derailleur was too high? Basically nothing would happen. Uh, we would just have uh, the chain longer than needed and the rear derailleur heavier than needed. So it would still be able to put the tension on the chain uh, so um, having the capacity of the rear derailleur too low is the problem, is bigger problem than having the capacity too high. In case of the front derailleur it's all much more simple because the front max capacity has nothing to do with the chain length or tension. Uh, it's just all about the shaping of those plates so that the derailleur will be able to, let's say, scoop up as low as possible in case of the uh, double chain rings or triple train rings on the crankset. And now we're ready to find out what capacity of the derailleurs we need for the drivetrain which is bought for our project. So let's say we've got 3 by 11 40, 30, 22 teeth chain rings on our crankset. This is the XT1. The first step is to find out the difference in the range of those teeth between the largest and the smallest. So 40 minus 22 that gives us 18. Write it down, 18. In the second step we need to find out what is the gearing range on our cassette. We've got here the XT1 for single, double and triple chain rings. That's good because we have triple uh, chain rings uh, on the crankset. And the teeth are 11 through 40. So once more 40 minus 11 that gives us 29. In case of one by drivetrain, because we've got here the triple uh, chain rings on the crankset, if it was only one, we don't need to even bother about the crankset. We only need then the gearing um, range on the cassette. So that would be 40 minus 11 and that's 29. In case of the front mech capacity, we are only interested in the gearing range of our crankset. In this case, 40 minus 22 and that's 18. We are almost done, we need just one more parameter of the rear derailleur and that's the largest sprocket on the cassette that our rear derailleur will be compatible with. So once we know the capacity we only need to check out for this largest sprocket on the cassette that our rear mech will work with. So knowing the capacity and this number we are ready to purchase the right derailleurs for our projects.